El crecimiento industrial trajo consigo un grado de contaminación del que nadie, en un principio, supo manejar. Y desde que en 1997 se creara el Protocolo de Kioto, que a 2009 ya tenía 187 estados que lo habían ratificado, los países han buscado la forma de incentivar la reducción de emisiones de dióxido de carbono. De esta forma, nacieron los bonos de carbono, que han servido como un límite en cuanto a las emisiones contaminantes y que hoy son un gran negocio sustentable. Así nos lo explica el experto norteamericano Ken Newcomb, quien vino a Chile para el lanzamiento de la Bolsa Climática de Santiago, una iniciativa de la Fundación Chile Selfing Capital y que cuenta con la participación de distintas empresas chilenas. Reducing greenhouse gas emissions compared to the use of fossil fuels in the energy sector. And almost the opposite, taking carbon out of the atmosphere that went there during the industrial era, era and during last century from the use of fossil fuels and storing that carbon in plants, mm -hmm. whether below ground um, or above ground in plant biomass. Mm -hmm. And anything that does that compared to business as usual creates um, emissions reductions or sequesters carbon and you know is better for the atmosphere. So you can record that and you can uh, get an accurate measure of how many greenhouse gas emissions reductions always measured in tons of carbon dioxide equivalent that you have achieved. There's all sorts of rules and regulations that you can follow to make uh, a very precise measurement and then you can trade those emissions reductions to companies say in Europe who are obliged to reduce their emissions mm -hmm. and are allowed to buy offsets, say from a Chilean company or project, to meet their obligations under their uh, domestic regulations. So that's one way of, of, of making money. Well, you know, what, what is new for Chile is that it says through the voluntary efforts of these eight big companies and the partnership of uh, Fundación Chile and Selfin um, that it's going to create its own domestic trading regime. It's going to create a market, a domestic market for emissions reductions that are not currently tradable in compliance markets that can't be sold into Europe or, or elsewhere for um, uh, obligations under the Kyoto Protocol. And that's a very smart move because, especially in sustainable agriculture, forestry uh, and land use, conserving forests, planting forests, um, uh, agriculture that uh, practices more carbon conserving uh, activities, those emissions reductions are not uh, very valuable in trade, yet they're extremely important for the environment. And by creating a market here in Chile for those sorts of emissions reductions in exchange for greening the companies and their image who are participating in this scheme, Chile is actually putting itself as a, uh, again as a pioneer in the carbon market and it will attract lots of investment from overseas and domestically to assume a lower carbon profile for the economy as a whole and allow itself to be more competitive in a world in which it's essential to reduce emissions mm -hmm. and there is some global regulation. So this is a very good positioning play for Chile. In, in setting up the, the Santiago Climate Exchange, Chile is effectively positioning itself to be more competitive in a world under the challenge of climate change. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's, uh, there are really two outcomes, as I said. There'll be quite a lot of investment in land use, forestry and sustainable land use, whether it's conservation of, um, of biodiverse uh, landscapes, um, whether it's uh, reforestation of degraded agricultural land, or simply better cropping practices to ensure that more organic matter is left uh, on the ground than in the soil. Uh, those sorts of things um, so far have not attracted investment because there's not been a market for those kinds of emissions reductions or not a very good market. Now Chile is making this, this market. 
So I think that's going to happen. So you know, investment by companies in Chile and investment by foreign companies in those activities with the expectation of selling carbon credits through the Santiago Climate Exchange. Mm -hmm. So that's number one. Um, number two, in the negotiations of the post-2012 global agreement under the Climate Convention that has been going on in Copenhagen, Cancun and Durban, all very difficult negotiations. The parties to the Climate Convention have said that they want to reward efforts, domestic efforts, by developing countries um, that take, where those countries take specific measures above and beyond business as usual to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions. And it's my view that one of the benefits to Chile will be that the parties to the climate convention will begin to buy the kinds of emissions reductions which will be produced as a result of the Santiago climate exchange. So those emissions reductions that currently can't be sold in the Kyoto markets in Europe or Japan uh, will now be able to be sold to the parties of the climate convention as a reward to Chile for being proactive in creating these kinds of emissions reductions. And I think that's going to be much bigger than people realize. And it's the first mover advantage that Chile is creating here that will create the opportunity that Chile will capture compared to its economic competitors in the region.